Hey guys, I'm Coach Adam from TeamElitePhysique.com. Today we are reviewing the Wasatch Warrior. Welcome to another Coach Adam's Bikini TV. We have ourselves a doozy of a contest. This is actually the biggest contest this year, the deepest contest this year outside of the Arnold Classic. So this is a, a real showing of some top talent of what's going to be seen this year. I think a lot of these girls that were in that first call out are going to be at the Olympia this year. It was just a really deep show. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So working our way from first place down, we had Amy, no surprise, winning the show with a perfect score. Um, she looked absolutely awesome. We're going to go into her physique. Um, in second place, we had here Jessica Wilson with a perfect score for second place. In third place, we had Malu, which had 10 points. Now, if you remember the last video I did where we talked about the scores being perfect all the way down, and I didn't think the judges really put... They were just kind of following the head judge. In this show, they actually, you see that there's a three points, a six points, a 10 points. You know, not everyone was unanimous on a decision. In a bikini, you should see a lot less unanimous decisions. You should see very few unanimous decisions. You should, it's, it's a very hard thing to judge bikini, and you should see very few unanimous decisions. Uh, when you're seeing that, it's really them just following the head judge. And there's no sport out there in the world where the head judge or the main judge will have that much input on things. You look at figure skating, you look at boxing, you look at all these sports, all the judges are very uh, on their own and what their scores are. And sometimes you see some weird things happen, but you never see a unanimous scoring all the way down. It's really, really rare, especially in a sport as subjective as this. So when I see these varying scores of three, you know, six, 10, um, the, the fourth place was 11 points. So just one point away uh, for Malu between Savannah um, that's a, you know, it shows that, hey, it's a lot closer. The judges are using their, using their own opinions, and I think that that's really important. You get back to a perfect score with uh, 15 points, which is, um, and I'll go into that one in the original call-out. Uh, when they did the call back, they only did a call back of five. When they did the first call-out, the first call-out had eight in it, and I do think that some of the judges adjusted their score. That's awesome racing going on when they did a, a top five callback versus the original top eight. And again, you have a little bit of that variance with um, having to stick to what they put in front of you, what the top five were that the head judge put in front of you. You can only pick between those top five. And that's where you get again to that perfect fifth place score. Um, if they left the original top eight out there or, or put called back a top, um, like an even number, I like even number call outs because it doesn't kind of identify who the head judge thinks is in first place. Um, but in this scenario, they did a top five callback. Um, Jackie got a perfect top, uh, perfect fifth place score. Did they actually think she was a perfect fifth place or were there some judges that made adjustments and thought someone else was fifth place and then she ended up in fifth place? She might have ended up in fifth place either way, but I think a top call, but when you do a top eight callback, calling back an even number of people, whether it's four, six, or even the eight, uh, makes more sense because you're not isolating someone in first place and putting them in that center box. I think that's one thing that could have been improved with the judging. I, I think that that should be, that should be changed um, around the entire NPC and IVB is to, to make it less clear who the head judge thinks is in first place so the judges make more of their own opinion. I think that's a, a big improvement the judges can make. But all in all, I give this judging a, a really high score. If we're going on a 10-point system, I give them basically like a 9 out of 10 on, on accuracy, on their judging, and on um, the, and the one thing I would change would be, hey, do, do an even number callback, make it less obvious who's in the middle so it's, you, know, you get less unanimous decisions, you get more judges using their own input. But all in all, I think the scores were pretty fair, and I think everyone who won and placed the way they would have would have placed that way either way, though it might have been closer if it was a more of an even number callback. So looking at going into um, the first callout, which was eight people, you have Kimber, my wife, of course, getting sixth place, her first callout of her career, so I was really happy about that. Um, in seventh place, you had Brittany Gillespie, um, who recently got second at the Clash. So uh, she was a she was someone I was expecting to be in the top three at this show. So we're going to go into her physique, just because she ended up in that seventh place spot. And then in eighth place, in that first call out, you had Carly Stevenson, which is an, another great physique. So let's go ahead and jump right into them and go into the details of what actually happened at the Wasatch Warrior. So the first call out happened. You had these eight that we talked about in the first call out. I knew there was going to be some movements going on. Um, Kimber was there. I was really excited about that. Obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this review without being any bias. She is my wife, but I was very excited to see her uh, get in that first call out. It was a really exciting moment for her because that's the best she's ever done in a show. And we'll go into her, her physique as well. Um, but the people who I thought were going to be in that first call out happened. And when I, when I saw this show on paper, I thought that there was no way Amy was going to lose. Her momentum's too high. The judges are too aware of her. Uh, she's been doing too good, and her physique is really on point. And that, the other things saying before saying her physique is on point isn't taking away from her physique being on point. Um, 
yes, she has momentum. Yes, she's uh, becoming a big name now because she's doing a lot of shows. Taking the Ashley approach, which I think is awesome because I think that we need more people doing a lot of shows. People want to see people competing. And I do think that she needs to be, if there's someone out there that can be an Olympia gatekeeper and not let 57 people qualify for the Olympia, do it. I would love to see five girls taking the Ashley approach, doing, you know, winning five shows a year and taking up 25 Olympia spots. So it makes it that much harder to get to the Olympia. I think absolutely go for it. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and in taking up those Olympia spots, I am all for it. Uh, there is a, people were complaining about actually doing it before, but I'm all for it. I say, go for it. Make it hard on everyone to get to Olympia. It's a prestigious show. We shouldn't have 60 people qualifying, qualifying for it. So be an Olympia gatekeeper. I love it, Amy. Keep going now. So we had the first call out happen. And the reason I thought Amy was going to be, uh, the winner of this show wasn't just momentum, her physique, all that, of course, she's sixth ranked bikini competitor in the world. So she was obviously a huge favorite for this. But because the way the, the this class is stacked up, it made a lot of sense because you have Savannah, who is there, who's a more muscular competitor. Um, you have uh, Jackie, who's there, who's a more muscular competitor. You had Brittany Gillespie, who's there, who's a more muscular competitor. These girls all have a lot of muscle. And then you had your kind of more petite, more smaller um, muscle competitors that do well, too. Um, Malu, who honestly, Malu really isn't the... Uh, a, a smaller competitor anymore. She came back this year and she was really, really full, um, but used to be more of like that petite competitor. And I do think that with Malu, and I was talking to Malu backstage about it a little bit, when she continues to do shows, she's someone that's hard to keep muscle. Um, you see that with a lot of athletes. You know, you, they get a couple shows in, they still holding their fullness pretty good. Show three and four, they start fading a little bit. They start losing some size, losing some fullness. That happens to the best of them, you know, and you'll see that and even Ashley talks about it in her podcast. That happens to her, too. So, but this show, she came in her first show and man, she was full. She was actually I was originally thinking it was going to be, you know, if it's a if it's going to be more the softer, smaller bikini competitors, the more petite bikini competitors, it would be Amy, even though Amy's not smaller petite because she fits the middle. Uh, it would be Amy, Malu and um, Jessica. And then if it was going to be the more muscular competitors, it would be Amy, Brittany, Savannah, right? And so I was like, that's going to be your probably your top three on on either of those, either ways it goes. But Amy, you know, as I always say in bikini, you don't want to be too much of everything. And Amy's kind of right in the middle of both of them. She's not crazy muscular up top on her shoulders. Last year, I was giving her a, a hard time about her, her quads being a little bit overpowering. This year, they're a lot more toned down. Um, and, and I even told you know, we talked last year about they were just a little bit overpowering last year. They're a little bit too dense, a little bit too bubbly in the quad, but really she, she streamlined things. She stopped doing leg specific exercise, a lot of compound neck exercises she got rid of and her legs really came down and she looks a lot more balanced now. There's very little um, negative to say about her physique in terms of balance, except for the specifics of what they're asking for, which everyone has a slight imbalance and she still has a, a tiny bit, but nothing that's really noticeable to the, to the untrained eye like last year. So, uh, yeah. So as the first call out happened, this is basically the lineup of the first call out. Um, Kimber was there, Brittany was there in the middle, and then they started doing some movements. And then this was the movement that basically happened. You know, Kimber stayed in the middle. Amy moved to the middle. You're seeing some movement. Savannah got moved outside. Um, Jessica stayed there. Um, so, or Jessica got moved in and, um, as movements kept happening, they turned them quite a few times. It was really exciting time. Um, obviously, you know, I'm rooting for Kimber. She's my wife, and this is her best calling she's ever had. This is the deepest show she's ever been in in terms of talent pool. A lot of really big names. You know, going into this show, um, we're going to go into her overall peak and whatnot, too. But going into this show, we were just trying to make improvements from the last show. We tried a whole bunch of different things. We didn't do a peak week, but we'll go into that, too. And um, But she, they kept turning her and keeping her in the middle. They turned them three times with uh, Kimber being in the middle next to um, Amy. You know, um, I, was, I was, you know, sure Amy was going to win this show. It was just her, it was her show to win. She looked really good on that stage. But it was an exciting time, and it just shows everyone out there, you know, like just because you're not getting those first call-outs in your first few shows, um, if I'm correct, this is Kimber's fifth show um, as a pro, and she never got um, close to this first call-out before, and now she's getting that first call-out with all these big names. So, Really exciting time, you know. Um, hopefully, she keeps climbing the ranks. I would, of course, love that. We made some big adjustments that um, on on most people wouldn't make that much sense, but on her, it makes a lot of sense. But you could see as they keep turning them, she stayed there, she stayed there, and I'm like, what's going on right now? Is she going to be in this top two right now? Is this going to? But you can see they keep turning and turning, and she's staying there. And I'm like, it's just a very exciting time. So I'm happy for that. Um, and then they started moving them out and moving everyone around. And then um, as they keep started moving everyone out. She got moved outside a little bit. 
Um, and she ended up in that sixth place spot. But it's just a cool thing to see when someone's climbing the ranks, whether that was my wife or not. It's still something really cool to see with that, you know, someone sticks to it. You try new things. Um, you know, we did a lot of unor unorthodox things for this one. And sometimes they're the right way to go. And so let's go ahead and go into that. But as you can see, Savannah moved in. You had Amy there. You had um, you still had Jess outside of that first that top three, and you still had Malu outside of that top three. And then as things kept changing, they started moving more and more and more, and they started working their way in more and more and more. So a lot of things transpired with this one. A lot of a lot of things I think happened in the walk too. And well, let's go ahead and go into their individual physique now. So let's go ahead and start with seventh place, Brittany Gillespie. And the reason I'm starting with Brittany Gillespie here is that she recently got second at The Clash. Now, this was a bigger show than The Clash. So um, in terms of the talent pool was there. And I do want to also go into the Wasatch Warrior. And what I'm going to start doing is when I'm at these shows, at least reviewing the quality of the show. And this was Robin Meyer's show. Um, I got to I got to admit, guys, she knows how to put on a show. If you're wanting to do a show next year and you wanted to do a a show where the competitor feels um, appreciated and it's organized and it's fun and there's a good backstage environment. There's or organization, which is which is huge, uh, good backstage pump up area, uh, things like that. Like there, it's people don't realize these things are really important. You know, you're there's some backstage pump up areas that are tiny and everyone's crowded and there's you're laying on concrete and there's nothing there for you to pump with. The tanning's on the other side of the of the of the venue like things like that all these little things happen sometimes tannings in a different hotel and you have to like walk through a street like it's, it's there's there's some crazy scenarios out there um that is not the wasatch warrior the wasatch warrior was just perfectly ran they had other sponsors from different things that are outside of our industry floor and decor was a sponsor i mean where do you see floor and decor as a sponsor you know you can tell that when when you see these types of sponsors that are not your normal you know quest protein bar or whatever you know cutler nutrition type of thing that they're really going outside the box to try to get more funding and more money to make the experience better for the athletes. When you see something like Floor and Decor and these other outside the norm sponsors and a whole list of sponsors, you know, there's something special going on there. She's pounding pavement. She's, she's ringing doorbells and going places to get these, uh, get these sponsors to, to promote these shows and make it a better experience. And you should see the, the, com competitor, the competitor goodie bag. Um, all the pros got sweatshirts. Uh, the awards are really cool, these big Thor hammers. Um, you know, and that was even for the amateurs too. So awesome place to compete. We're going to make this a team show next year. Again, we did it this year, but we're going to have a lot of the team elite physique athletes. I'm going to make this a, a once a year place for me to go visit with some of the coaches, coach Sam and Courtney were there too. Um, it was just a great, great experience for everyone. And we got a, had a really good time. So shout out to them. I just wanted to go into that first, but as far as that show goes and, and the venue and the beautiful city of Salt Lake, um, I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10 in terms of the show quality production, um, the, the judging quality, the fairness, I think it's a 10 out of 10 when you take everything into account. Um, just a fun show and how, a shout out to Robin for that one. So if you guys are looking for a good show to go to, I want to start doing these uh, reviews so you guys can kind of like look at what show would be good for you. But this one, honestly, it's really, really high up in the ranks. So um, great job to you, Robin. Uh, and I, honestly, too, another thing is, you know, this is like a male dominated industry, especially in the promotion thing. And whenever I see uh, a, a female promoter kicking ass like this i'm always like you know i was raised by a single mom so whenever i see that i'm like good for you you know just kicking ass in a male dominated industry so i think that's awesome too all right now back to Brittany gillespie who got second at the clash falls to seventh at this show but is it really falling the talent level is a lot deeper um and in the, in her scenario i do think it's a little bit of a fall because i think that with her getting second at the last show and the talent level that she still could have popped into that top four so um, top four or so area. Now we talked about her before on her overall musculature and having so much muscle up top on her arms and shoulders. You know, she's got a very, very wide structure, which is great. You know, it's great for bikini to have that wide clavicle width, really, really shoulder capped. I mean, she's got some powerful shoulders and arms here. I mean, there's very few people that are as wide as Brittany Gillespie on that pro stage. I mean, there's very few people that are as wide as her with this big of a high lat. I mean, she has these crazy proportions. Look at these Beautiful high lats she has. I mean, those are awesome, awesome high lats. Genetically, just a gorgeous structure and muscle bellies. The problem with Brittany is that her muscle bellies are maybe too crazy in some areas. Look at how crazy her glute is in comparison to her leg size, right? If you look at her leg size versus her glute size, her, leg, her glutes are almost two to one ratio of her actual leg size. And I do think that takes away from her in that front pose. Um, now seeing Brittany in pictures and seeing her on her Instagram, I talked about her being really big up top and really 
uh, really powerful up top. Seeing her in person and seeing her pose, she does give off a really big physique, but it's not as crazy big as I thought it was. Seeing her under like, you know, the goon lighting in a, at a at Venice gym and perfectly pumped and all that and, you know, hitting the right angles and on her Instagram, she looks a little bigger than she does in person. Um, a lot more realistic in person than actually what I was seeing her on the pictures. So I will take that back. Though she is still pushing the limits of size, it's not crazy, crazy big like I thought. Now, structurally, she's just always going to appear big. That wide clavicle base, that high lat, that rounded shoulder, those, those awesome arms. But it's not crazy over the top like I thought it was um, before. But Still pushing the limits. And now thing that I do hurt, think hurts her is her glutes are so powerful compared to the rest of her body. It does. It is extremely out of balance. Now in bikini, usually you have a slight imbalance in the glutes. You have women that have big glutes that are overpowering to their physique that do really well. Laura Lee is not in perfect balance. She has glutes that overpower her physique. Everyone talks about it, but everything else is so put together and they like it so much. It does create that wow factor. So you have kind of the balance weighed out with the wow factor. There is no doubt that when Brittany walks out with uh, these crazy glutes that people aren't saying wow, right? So there's wow factor made up for the balance issues, but is it enough wow factor to make up for the balance issues, which is clearly obvious to a trained eye? Um, and I think that that's going to be one thing that she can tone down a little bit, tone down that glute a little bit, get this arm a little bit closer to the body, maybe even put that arm straight down, kind of blocking a little bit of the glute, maybe turning the glute over a tiny bit and not showing so much of it in that front pose. But even in that back pose, you're still going to want to bring that glute down. And honestly, I think because it's so powerful, I think that if she had more roundness to her hamstring and just a little bit more size to her hamstring, it would really help with the overall appearance of balance. And I think that's where it hurt her. I think a trained judge really saw this, wasn't as impressed as the wow factor was. And you're going to have that when you have this type of physique. Until you're a name and everyone's recognizing you as like that wow factor as a positive, you're going to have some hit and misses that show. So um, awesome physique, though. Don't want to take anything away from her. Um, I think that if anyone were to look at her physique and say, oh, I'd rather be balanced or I'd rather be this for real life, I think everyone would want to look like this. <laughs> this is like the ultimate Instagram influencer look. This is what girls would love to aspire to be. But we're talking about bikini as a sport here. Is it balanced? No, the balance is a little bit off. Um, is it overpowering to the other girls? A little bit up top, but not as crazy as I thought it was before. So um, I think this is very correctable and it's correctable this season. I think that she could actually get to the Olympia this year. Um, and I think if she makes these corrections, she could get to the Olympia this year and actually do pretty good. I think she could probably be a top 15er at the Olympia because her structure is still, even though it's out of balance right now, structurally, you cannot train a girl to have a structure like this. You either have one or you don't. Like if someone comes to me and says, I want to look like Brittany Gillespie, I'll be like, so do I. Like who doesn't want to look like her? The structure is just ridiculous. The muscle bellies are round and full, but the balance is still off, right? So, um, you know, that's going to be a very rare thing. It's kind of like a flex wheeler. Like he was so round and bubbly, like everyone wanted to look like flex wheeler. And I'm like, good luck with that, you know? So, um, so shout out to her. Awesome physique, not as overpowering as I thought it was, but yes, the balance still needs work. Now let's go into Kimber Bonilla, or as she's been nicknamed by everyone, the Vanilla Vanilla, <laughs> which I love that nickname. I don't know who started that, but it's great. <laughs> the Vanilla Vanilla Kimber Bonilla. Um, so looking at her overall physique, um, first off, you know, um, there's, let's look at the positives of her physique and the negatives of her physique. First off, the judges said to her they, they want her to have a little bit fuller of an upper body. You know, she's a very tall competitor. She's 5'10". Um, and in bikini, that can be a little bit of a disadvantage. You know, when you're the tallest girl in bikini and everyone else is, you know, 5'5", five, five, you're running into people like Jess and Amy who are 5'2 or so, you look really, really tall, you know, and you look, um, you know, it makes you look naturally just bigger than everyone. Now, the things that are really awesome about her physique also hurt her physique a little bit, and that's going to be um, something she has to work around. So one of the things that's really crazy about her physique. And I think a lot of women would love to look like Kimber. She's got that 5'10", beautiful, tiny waistline, you know, that very model look. Um, but some of the positives are also negatives about her physique in terms of bikini. Now she's really tall. So she has a, uh, and she has a really small waistline. You know, you rarely get someone who's this tall and has a small waistline. And because she's so tall and has such a small waistline, sometimes it comes off as too small, right? It comes off as you know, there's, there's certain things on competitors that could be taken as positives and could be taken as negatives. When you look at Issa, her waistline is so small that some judges are like, man, that's crazy. That's so good. And then some judges are like, oh, that's too much. That's, that's a little too freaky. Her waistline's too small. Like, it's not something anyone can achieve naturally or uh, achieve at all. So we can't really reward that, right? So there's different things like that that become too much. Sometimes 
guys have shoulders that are like too big and it overpowers their physique. And everyone's like, oh, those, some judges are like, her, her shoulders are so awesome. And some judges are like, ah, it's too much. It overpowers his physique, that type of thing. So everyone has that kind of thing. Um, with her, it's because she's, she's so tall and has such a small waistline, some judges are going to love it. Some judges are going to hate it. And that's just going to be part of her overall, um, you know, figuring out in the show. Now she can fill out her lats a little bit more to help with this and to help not make the waistline look so, so tiny because if her, she does have a lower lat. So if she brings this up a little bit and creates a little bit more width on that lat, it is going to make the waistline look a little, appear a little bigger. Now here's something that's really important for all of you out there. This show, when we saw the roster, basically how it went is I already knew we were going to, I was going to be going to this show. It was a team show. I was already going to be going out there. And I was like, hey, babe, you want to come with me to a show and do this show? And she's like, yeah, why not? I'll jump into it. I'm already in shape. She did a show the week before. We did no peak week for this show. She basically reduced her carbs by about 50%. And then we increased them by like 200% Thursday and Friday, trying to fill her out as much as possible. Workouts didn't change at all. Um, if anything, she was probably a little bit bloated in the stomach from eating so many carbs the last couple of days before that. And, um, you know, and she did best that she ever did. So that just something for you guys to take into account. Peak week is not everything. Everyone thinks, oh, it's peak week, peak week. It's already come down to peak week. I'm going to do this. I can't tell you how many times I've done something like this where I had someone jump into a show where they didn't even do a peak week. They did all their regular workouts. All they did was take like a day off before the, before the gym to reduce inflammation or before the show to reduce inflammation and then just feed them. And everything came out, you know, their best showing. So is this a peak week we're going to probably be doing in the future? Maybe it worked really well. So, um, so with her overall physique, they wanted to see a little bit more size on that upper body. Um, I could see the argument for it. She's pretty, she's pretty muscular up top. I mean, if you look at her shoulder base and you look at Brittany Gillespie's shoulder base, they're very comparable in terms of the clavicle width, in terms of the shoulders. Um, you know, some people would look at her and be like, man, she's a bikini competitor. She's pretty jacked for a bikini competitor. I would agree in terms of 2010 muscul muscularity, this would be with how muscular she is now. They'd be like, yeah, she's too muscular. In terms of today's bikini, they're saying, you know, a little bit more size, fill out that frame up top. As far as the glutes and legs go, the glutes and legs are exactly where they need to be. I don't think that she needs any more than that. The tie-in's perfect. The adductors aren't too much. There's nice roundness to the hamstring. She has that very nice skin texture too. When we talk about pretty muscle where there's a lot of muscle, but there's not any of that density or separation and detail, any of that grain to it. So this is very good level of conditioning for her. I wouldn't have changed anything about her conditioning. I think that the only thing that she needs to work on is we can get the lats and we can get the, the shoulders a little bit bigger, but not much just to fill out that, that real estate that she has because she is 5'10 and then a tiny bit more density on the glutes, not necessarily more size. And she'd be good. Now she is posing for her height as well. So you'll see that it's a little bit different posing. Posing is going to be different per girl. You know, if you're standing really tall above everyone, you might be posing different for height. So her posing is a little bit unorthodox in terms of that. We tried that new, we got rewarded for it. The judges said, keep doing it. And that's another thing that you got to consider. You never pose just because there is a standard of posing. You don't do that. You pose to what's best for your physique only. And that's the thing about bikini. It's going to be a lot different than doing quarter turns in a figure pose. In a figure, in figure, you can't really do anything different besides face the front, quarter turn, face the back, quarter turn. It's the same for everyone. So with bikini, there is no right way of posing. Okay? There's, there's an argument for every way being the right way. It's just face the front, face the back. The back, there's a little bit harder to get away from in terms of variety. But in the front, there's a ton of variety you can get away from. Pose to what's best for you. <clears throat> if you have a strength, pose to it. If you have a weakness, hide it. You know, That's going to be the good thing about bikini. And um, <clears throat> you know, we had a lot of positive feedback about her posing, posing for her height in this one. And there's going to be a couple little things we're going to change as well going into the next show with her, with her posing to kind of show her attributes the most and hide her her weaknesses, um, hide her weaknesses the most too. So look forward to that one. Um, I think that she has a really good shot this year as well with going into this level of talent pool and getting a first call. It shows that she's right there and that she can get another first call at another big show and start working her way up and eventually get that win. Hopefully that happens this year for her. I would like that, obviously like that a lot. Now working our way into the top five here. So at fifth place, Jackie with a perfect fifth place score. Um, now, why does she edge out Kimber? Now, I think that there's a couple arguments for both in both directions. It kind of depends on what you like. Um, Jackie has a little bit of a wider waistline. Kimber has a little bit of a waistline that can come off as too small. So what do you go with there? It's 50-50, right? Who do you go with? One is a little bit blockier in the waist or one is a little bit smaller in the waistline. You know, in this scenario, I don't think that was as big of a factor, but I'm sure it was considered. 
Um, when you look at the tie-ins, hers are a little bit crispier than, than Kimber's. Her glutes are a little bit more dense than Kimber's. So from the glute shot, if you're going for um, harder conditioning, more density, then you're going to go for her over Kimber in that fifth versus sixth place spot. Um, where she would, I would consider a, a little bit of a loss is these, this deep V here that she has on her adductors. You would generally vote against that in terms of the back pose, but in terms of the overall fullness and the overall fullness to the legs, you would give it to her if you're going for fullness. So this is a very close one, very close coin toss on this one. In terms of the overall shoulder width, you know, shoulder width, you would probably go to Kimber. In terms of the overall density and shoulders, uh, sh the, the, the roundness of the shoulder, you would go to Jackie. Um, in terms of the, you know, the, the lat proportions to the waistline, you would go with Jackie. So there's a lot of arguments for both that one. If you know, if you put them head to head and you didn't put them in a position of like, you only let five on the stage, you'd have a very close score at the end of that. And I could see the arguments for both. So I definitely don't disagree with this one at all. Um, it's a very close apples and oranges type of scenario because there's a lot of variances there and what you're going to go with. So um, now when you're looking at her overall physique, there's not a whole lot for her to work on. I would say be careful with the adductors. They're getting a little bit crazy. I think everything else on her back pose is really good. If there's a way for her to get her waistline a little bit smaller, that would be helpful. She can do that by getting her lats a little bit bigger and giving her waistline the appearance of being smaller. She can get a little bit more shoulder width in this back pose, even if it's not necessarily actual muscle, but it's actually just opening up her shoulders just a hair to give the appearance of a better V taper and a smaller waistline because that's the only thing that hurts her, especially when they're doing the turns and her waistline gets exposed or where they're doing the walk and her waistline gets exposed. It is a little bit of a more wider waist and that's going to be the one thing. How does she hide that? How does she make that look smaller? Uh, because genetically, it's just not a tiny way. So that's going to be getting the upper body a little wider, um, doing things, you know, waist training on your exercises, eating the right foods in the off season to bring that waistline down, picking the right exercises in the gym where you're using minimal of your obliques, things like that. So there's going to be a lot of little things that she can do. It's a time process to get that waistline smaller. I've seen it being common for girls to get their waistline down one, one and a half inches when they do all the things the entire year. Um, to get that waistline down. And I think with her, if she got her waistline down an inch and a half or so, got her shoulders up another like half inch on both shoulders and opened her lats a tiny bit that, and got her adductors down, that would move her way up the ranks and she could be one of these top competitors. But until then, I think she'll be stuck around this position. Um, beautiful physique just needs a little bit of fine tuning for her to get to that next level. And I really hope to see her do that. So next up, we have Savannah. And um, Savannah in this, when she came out, I was actually really surprised surprised with um with her overall look and um in a positive way uh she really did make some big improvements without getting bigger or more dense you know when i saw her at the usa so when i you know that's the last time i saw her was usa's when she stole the usa miss usa from me <laughs> we got second in the usa's uh with asia won her pro card and then she, they both were in the middle i thought asia had it and then savannah got it so I got a personal beef with Savannah for taking me, taking my Miss USA title, <laughs> but congrats to her on that. I thought she was a little bit too dense, too muscular, too hard at USA's to be, to be winning that over at least Asia there. Shoulder width, she had it though. She had that clavicle width better than Asia at, the, at Miss USA or at USA's to win the USA overall. So I saw the argument there, um, but I thought she was a little bit too dense and I thought if she got to the pro level, she was going to look really dense and look a little bit harder than everyone else. Um, and it wouldn't work at that level. It would work at a national level because the, the obviously the uh, the extremes are a lot less. You know, you're not competing. These are all girls who just got their pro card for the overall. It would make sense. But at the pro level, everyone's fine-tuned their physique so much that that would come off as too dense, too hard, and she'd have to tone it down to, to stick out in that category. She did pretty well her first, her first couple shows uh, as a pro. She's done very well pretty much every time. And when she came out this time, I was the most impressed I've been with her overall physique now. She was... She was full but soft, and it was a really, really good look for her physique. I really liked how she did it. She didn't get bigger. She didn't get more dense. She's not more separated. Um, she's about the same size but with like a soft, just a nice softer layer of maybe just a little bit more body fat. And I think that this works really, really good for her, for her front pose. I think it hurts a little bit in the back pose because I didn't see her tie-ins being as crispy as I've seen them before. If there's a way for her to do both, to, to have this front pose be this with this kiss of softness, but a little bit harder in those glutes. I think that's going to be the perfect recipe for her success because I was very impressed. This felt, this felt right into line with everyone. It wasn't as jacked as I thought it was before. I think when she was, she might've even been a little bit more muscular at USA's. I don't know if she's toned it down a little bit 
to me, it looks like she's she's toned it down. It could be just the the little bit of the softness to her on this show. But this was this was a lot closer to what I thought was the standard of bikini nowadays. Obviously, the bikini nowadays is is jacked. But um, in terms of the overall muscularity, without the density, without the with the conditioning being there, without that grainy hard muscle, um, I thought that this was a lot better look for her. And I think that this front look is is just dead on where it needs to be. The back look can be a little bit better in the tie-ins. Um, and I would love to see her waistline be a little bit smaller from the back if there's a way to do that for her. Same thing as like with Jackie from the back. From the front, I didn't see it so much. Her waistline looked pretty good. Um, but from the back, I think that could be a little bit smaller. So I don't know if there's a way for her to help out with that. But probably the same things, exercise selection, vacuums, foods, all that. So, um, But I was very impressed with it. I think that fourth place, there's a strong argument for having her in third place. And you could see why she was in um, that, that the scores were so close. In my opinion, I would have had her in third place at this show. Um, putting Malu in fourth place, and I'll go into why um, during the uh, with Malu right now. Um, but I thought overall package was just a little bit better than Malu's on this one. I would have just slightly edged her out. There's an argument for both, but um, great job. And I think she just brings this package again. Maybe she has to just push a little bit harder in the back pose, or maybe she has to come in a tiny bit tighter on the legs. Um, I don't know what the, the what it is to get those tines to be there with keeping this front front body paper. She's almost there. And once she starts doing that, and once she can get both of those together, the front and the back to both look like this, um, I think that she has her winning package, her her Olympia qualifying package. Now we move on to Malu. Malu in third place here. And, um, and I'm going to go into Malu's physique, her improvements she's made, and why I think she, honestly, this one should have placed fourth under Savannah. So, First off, her front pose, when she came out, I was like, dang, she's made some serious improvements. She's a lot fuller now. She's rounder now. She's a lot more muscular. I was talking to her backstage, and she said she was, I think she said she was two or three kilograms above where she was the last time she competed. So um, in American weight, that's about six pounds or so if it was a three kilogram, 6.6 .6 pounds is what it would be. So that's a that's a lot of overall size now. Was that size all fullness from muscle, more skeletal muscle, or is that size because there's some body fat too? And if you look back at her old pictures, um, when you look at her back pose, you're going to say some of that is from muscle and some of that is from body fat. I think it's about 50-50 here. And this is the only area I think she got hurt in. Uh, when you look at her glute tie-in, out of that top six in the morning pictures, and this is the thing, it was, it was in the morning. In the morning, her tie-ins really weren't showing much at all. And she just needs to lose a little bit more body fat on her glute tie-ins and she'll be right there. So I think that instead of being, you know, three kilograms up, if she was maybe two kilograms up, um, then she would be there. I think she said she was up three. So um, if she was up two kilograms, maybe being only up one kilogram instead of two, right? So just a little bit harder in those glutes and she would be right there. I think at worst case scenario, if she had her tie-ins where they were before, where she was a little tighter, but still had close to this level of fullness. Obviously, she's not going to keep this level of fullness if she's diet, more dieted down. Um, she probably would have been in second place. I don't really see anyone beating Amy um, at, at, at that last show. She was pretty much dead on. So um, that's the only thing I saw with her. Now, one thing I will do is um, seeing, her, seeing her after judging, after the judging, uh, she was working with her coach backstage on getting her tie-ins to show a little bit more. And then at the night show, she was pushing a little bit harder, showing her tie-ins a little bit better. Um, but still, it was still a body fat issue, but her tie-ins did show up a lot better at night. So it's great that they recognized the issue in the morning and then corrected it at night, but it's a little too late. You know, obviously they, they went through the, the scores already and it wasn't rejudged, but um, if she came in a tiny bit tighter, I think she could have got as high as second place. I've talked about Malu before in the past, uh, still thinks that she has one of the best posing routines in the entire industry. I, I honestly would put her in the top like three best posing routines in the sport. I mean, if you guys want to see someone as an expert level poser, watch her do to a show, go, go to a show. Um, just very flowy, very just in sync with the music. It's like, it's almost like a dance for her. It's just so wild. She just transforms and just controls the stage. It's impossible not to pay attention to her when she's doing her posing routine. And that's a big part of success in bikini. It's not a bodybuilding show. You know, it's not, you know, from, from bodybuilding, I talked about in the podcast yesterday, Bodybuilding is judged from the waist, from the, from the head down. They don't care what your face looks like. They don't care about how you're flowing in between, in between exercise as long as you're keeping your, in between poses, in between, as long as you're keeping your waistline tight. Um, in bikini, everything matters. It's a, it's a fitness model contest. So your hair, your makeup, your tan, your flow, your confidence on stage, all these things, your suit, you know, your jewelry, tan, shoes, all that 
we're, we, we've covered, you know, eight or nine things even before we've gotten to the body at this point, right? So there's a lot of factors that go into this that some women just have an advantage on and you can't really teach someone how to pose like model. You kind of got it or you don't. That's just like a natural flow. That's that Brazilian blood she's got, I think. <laughs> you can just dance and flow. So um, one of the better posers um, out there. Now, as far as the overall improvement she's made, Honestly, she doesn't need to make any more improvements for this physique to get to the Olympia. Um, all she needs to do is get that conditioning in a little bit better, get those tie-ins to show up. She's put on a lot of muscle. I don't think she could have done any more in the off-season that she did. The only thing she could have done is come in a little tighter for this show for uh, for this show to, to really peak um, and show that new muscle that she's earned. Um, and I think at the next show, she's obviously going to get the feedback. The judges are going to say this. Her tie-ins weren't tight enough. She's going to get that feedback. She's going to come in. So watch out for her in the next few shows. I would predict within her next three shows, given she's not running into Amy's and Ashley's and Laura Lee's and Janet's, that you're going to see her um, win a show here really soon. Like within those next probably three shows, unless she runs into one of those big names, unless she jumps into like a Pittsburgh or New York or something like that, where there's going to be big names. I think that she will do um, really well. So she's someone that I'd probably would just send her to Charlotte this next weekend coming up to go and win that show, honestly, and get her Olympia qualification because she's so good. Diet her down for a week, load her for a day, and she'll probably win that Charlotte show. So... Um, that's that's but they're going to game plan at their camp, but that's what I would do with her because she's so close. She needs very little improvements. And in second place, we have the ageless Jessica Wilson. I mean, she gets better every single year. It's just crazy. She's a master's bikini competitor, just kicking ass for years at this point. And she is just so damn good. And she keeps making improvements, which is crazy, you know? So for all those women who say, you know, oh, when I was 40, things stopped working or whatever, like pure on excuses. This girl keeps getting better and better. She's beating 20 year old fresh pros all day long. She's a, going to be a, an Olympian, probably going to be a top 10 Olympian soon because she keeps making improvements in terms of regressing, zero regressing ever. I mean, it's always just floor on the gas pedal, moving ahead, moving ahead, moving ahead. Um, and in terms of like backstage and being a cheerleader for everyone else, probably the best sport in the entire industry. Like she's just so nice and sweet and everyone loves her. She's backstage. She's so fun. Um, you know, I just wish everyone was like Jessica. If everyone was like Jessica backstage, the industry would just be like, no one would ever quit because she's so fun and such a, just a, a great honor to be around backstage. And, uh, she's just, a, just a, this, a, a, the greatest person backstage. So, um, just a cheerleader for everyone. Like there's some people who are, do that. Like when they get second place and someone else wins, they do that, like kind of fake, Oh, congrats. Right. Jessica's like ecstatic for the person who actually wins first place, like genuinely happy that someone won, even though she's not qualified for the Olympia. Like she's, she's just like genuinely happy for everyone. And it's so great to see that there's a genuine person like that out there. Now, as far as her overall physiques, again, another huge improvement on her physique. She's rounder this year. She's fuller this year. Now, the look of bikini, it's changed a little bit. They want a fuller physique, a little bit more muscle, but also a little bit softer. Let's look again how we talked about the last show, right? I think they really messed up with the conditioning overseas at the UK. I think they went way harder than anyone will ever place top 10 at the Olympia at, right? When we look at Maureen being the standard how close is Jessica to that level of conditioning versus who they picked in the UK? There's a total difference, right? There's tighter girls at the show, at the, at the Wasatch show. It's not like the judges had to pick a tight girl at the last one. There were softer girls in the UK over there too. I think that was a bad pick. I think that they didn't go with the standard. In this show, they could have went harder if they wanted. There was harder girls there, but they chose to the standard, right? When you look at Jessica being second place here, I think that she's the closest to Maureen. I think that that was the closest level of conditioning. You have a tie-in here, but it's not a full tie-in. You have good roundness and fullness to her glutes. I think where she loses here next to Amy is the overall glute fullness on that upper outer edge, that glute medius could have been just a little fuller there. Um, but when we talk about the conditioning and we talk about Maureen being the standard, remember that is the standard for the current bikini champion is the, is the template for what we need to be picking for every show going forward because that's what the top judges in the world said. So when Moz picked um, Esther in the UK, that was way harder than the current standard, and I think this is very close to what it needs to be. So I'm very happy with the head judge's eye here. He had the option. That's, that's the important thing. He had the option of going harder, and a lot of times these judges use excuses, and they're like, oh, we can only pick from who we got. There's always someone who's closer to the standard, but you always, a lot of times they're always going harder and saying that there's not. There was people harder at this one, and he picked the right people for the, for the position. So shout out to the judges for actually sticking to that standard, not being impressed with girls that were bigger, not being impressed with girls that were harder, not getting carried away, and keeping bikini, bikini. Let's make bikini, bikini again. So with looking at Jessica, I am very happy with her overall look. I don't think it's an unachievable look, and that's what's important about bikini. 
It is the entry-level bodybuilding division for women, and I think it needs to stay uh, obtainable and achievable and realistic. When you get to these crazy levels of conditioning, crazy levels of muscle, it's no longer the entry-level fitness model division. It becomes bodybuilding, right? It's totally different. We can't turn every division into bodybuilding. I keep saying it over and over again. You're going to shrink the market. No one's going to have anywhere to compete. They're going to go to other organizations if you keep pushing the muscle and pushing the conditioning. So when they stick to this, I'm like, thank you for sticking to it and using your brain, right? So looking at this overall conditioning on her, it's beautiful. It's exactly where it needs to be. Looking at her overall shape, beautiful, exactly where it needs to be. You know, I don't think there's really anything here besides the glutes that's going to keep her from winning versus Amy. Um, and that's really it. Just a little bit more glute on the upper outer edge of the glute. The brownness of the hamstrings are really good. The posing is, is great. Now, a couple things that I'm personally not a fan of, and sorry, Jess, I love you, but I'm just not a fan of it. I like her better in the other suit. This pink suit, I don't think goes really great with her skin tone. It's not bad. It's an okay contrast. I love her in that aquamarine suit she was rocking for a while. I'm not a huge fan of the hair color because it's so close to the tan color. There's very little contrast in between the two of them. But those are the only like little things. And those are kind of more of a me thing. Obviously, it didn't hurt her that bad in the scores. I don't think it was, there was any way she was beating Amy this day with the difference of glutes. So, um, but my personal opinion, I would shorten up the hair a little bit. I would add more contrast to the hair, whether it's lighter or darker. And I would go back to the, the aquamarine suit. I would probably go with one bracelet too, but that's just like a very specific thing to me. You could probably do two and just be just fine. Everything else, flawless. And keep bringing this physique. <clears throat> this physique will... Definitely get her to the Olympia, even though she still needs a little bit more. Ideally, I would say put, just keep running her in other shows, get her pro, her Olympia qualification soon, and then um, you know, and then hang it up to the rest of the year. Build out the upper outer edge of the glute so she could be top ten at the Olympia. I think she could definitely be uh, a top ten at the Olympia. And honestly, um, I don't want to I don't want to misquote her age. I think she's I think she's over forty, and I think that she could be the Miss Olympia Masters too. Like I think that she could walk away without that, that trophy you know, seven days a week, probably on an off day, she could win that show. She's so far ahead. So, um, hopefully she ends up doing that too. I don't know if that's her plans. Um, she's a real competitor too. So I, I think she will probably want to go after the, the open Miss Olympia more so than the master, but I think she would be a, a shoe in for winning that master's Olympia and no surprise winning the show. We have Amy here with a perfect score. Uh, when she walked out, honestly, when I saw the, the roster here, I thought she would win this with a perfect score going into it. Just the, the way that the athletes were positioned, it just made sense because she was like right in the middle of everyone. And I really like, I really like her physique. Honestly, she has a physique that there is very little to improve on at this point. Um, it's very rare. You run into that, that, person where you say there's just very little to make improvements on last year I was saying her quads were too big and I I still think I was right that's what some judges told me too um, but the judges still they said hey it's fine we're not gonna we're not gonna dock her for it too hard I thought they were a little bit too dense and a little bit too muscular in this upper quad area here and um, you know that was some of the feedback I heard from the judges as well now as far as this year, though, she's really fine-tuned those quads. And in terms of the overall size, there's no problem with the overall size anymore. Um, she's shorter, so she has a rounder muscle belly. Um, she still has some, some strong density, but I don't think it's over the top where it's hurting her. In the quads is probably the only place where I'm like, okay, there's a lot of density there. But everywhere else, it's like a nice, soft, uh, a nice, soft, pretty muscle. You're not seeing any of the hamstring separation detail. You're seeing a full tie-in, but you're not seeing an etched tie-in. Remember, Maureen conditioning, not UK Esther full tie-in, fully shredded conditioning, right? This is the level of conditioning that is very similar to the Maureen, where we talk about a full tie-in without an etched granite carved tie-in, right? So that's there. The fullness is there. Um, you know, there's really not a whole lot she needs to work on at this point. Honestly, I think that she should just keep it here. I know she's getting feedback from the judges, and some of the judges have said to fill out and get the upper glute a little bit more dense, a little bit rounder. I don't think that's a positive for her personally, but those are what the judges is going to go with. The judges say, of course, I think that right now her imbalance is her glutes. You know, everyone has a slight imbalance to their glutes, especially in bikini. They want the biggest glutes as you can without them being imbalanced. Like, how do you do that? You're always going to be pushing it a little bit. I do think she's pushing it already. I don't think she can handle much more size before they become overpowering and she runs into issues with it. So me personally, I would say keep it right here. Her glutes are overpowering, but her shoulders are also a little bit overpowering to her arms too and her overall upper body. The two things that you see are just a little bit overpowering are her glutes and her shoulders. So they, but it's, it's a nice balance because it's almost balanced. In bikini, you're pushing and pulling all these things to kind of give off the appearance of being balanced without 
actually being balanced and then you pose for balance when you have these things. But so the one thing I will say is her shoulders, they're pushing the limits. I would stop there too. Um, but she has two things that are a little bit off balance, but she needs those shoulders to balance out the roundness of her glutes being a little bit off balance too. If she had small shoulders, her glutes would look even bigger. They would look, they would, the, the imbalance would be more obvious. So I think how she's put together right now is pretty much exactly how she needs to do it. I would keep it, I would honestly keep it exactly here. I wouldn't change a single thing going all the way to the Olympia. I think with her physique being like this, she moves up anywhere between, you know, one to even four spots up at the Olympia this year and could even be like a top three girl with this look if she pushes the glutes anymore i think that that could hurt or not help her at this point the momentum she has the physique she has she's already made improvements i don't think she needs to make any more to move up the ranks even farther she's doing everything she needs to do strategy wise she's doing a lot of shows getting in a lot of the front of the judges there's pretty much no judge that hasn't been she hasn't been in front of at this point she's being an olympia gatekeeper which i think is absolutely awesome i think i wish more girls would do it because that's how you build your fan base you know i think people think when these people become uh, people become professional athletes. Like they get this like signing bonus, like LeBron James or something. You make nothing when you get a pro become a professional athlete in IFBB. You actually pay. You actually have to pay for your pro card. You lose money when you become a professional athlete. How you make money is by building your fan base and by working with something in the industry, by building your fan base and getting sponsorships and things to, to pay your way and that type of thing, right? That's how you make your money. When you go to these shows as a, as a professional, um, you know, you're, you're not getting these huge price checks and you're going to get like $1,500, $2,000, maybe at a big show, $3,000 for winning the whole show, but it's going to cost you $1,500 to get there. Right? <laughs> so it's not, you're not doing it by competing except for shows like the Olympia and the Arnold, which do pay a lot more, of course. So how you do it is you get out there, you start, you know, building this huge fan base, you work in the industry, you get sponsorships that pay your way, you get endorsements, things like that. And that's where you make the money. So you, you, you make a career out of the getting the fan base. So you competing once a year doesn't do that much for you. So in terms of the, that side of things, and she does work in the industry, uh, the fitness industry, I think that it's a smart thing for her. So one, she's getting in front of all the judges. Two, she's being an Olympia gatekeeper, which I'm a huge fan of. I, I, I think people say that it's like a bad thing. I think it's the best thing in the world. I mean, we've been, I've been an Olympia gatekeeper with Ashley for, for years now, and we got so much hate for it for years. But I'm like, if you, don't, if you want to get in, beat her. You know, you're going to you're gonna have to compete against her anyway, so you better beat her. Just go after it, right? So um, I think that that's awesome for the sport. It's awesome for the fans to see someone compete, you know, eight times a year or so, so they can actually go and see their athlete. You know, there's a lot of girls in Salt Lake City that want to see the Laura Lees. The, you know, Ashley's been there the last couple of years. Uh, they want to see all these top girls, but they don't compete except for the Arnold and Olympia. And maybe they can't afford to go to the Ohio or can't afford to go to, to Las Vegas or Florida for the Olympia. You know, but they're in their hometown. They have 100 bucks to go to, a, to go watch the show at night. They get to see what do pros look like, what do their favorite pros look like. So shout out to Amy for doing that, for being the example. And, and people like Ashley who compete all the time to be the example and, and getting in, in touch with your fans and, and doing it. She's doing all the right things that she needs to do and pushing her body without breaking at this point too. So shout out to her. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about her overall physique. It's, it's just there, you know, it's just there at this point. I wouldn't change anything. Keep doing what you're doing and um, keep winning those shows. So shout out to her. And I hope to see her do a whole bunch more and win a whole bunch more this year. I do think that she'll move up the ranks at the Olympia this year with how everything's going right now with her overall momentum and with the package that she brought this year versus last year. I was hard on her last year, you know, and I told her that her quads were too big. I thought it, they, I, I thought they were too big and too dense. This year, they've, they're, it's a different story. It's a different Amy. She is improved by having less of something, right? Everyone thinks they need more muscle, more muscle, more muscle. She is significantly better this year with having less muscle, right? When does that happen? So bikini is a different thing, you know, and she's really nailing it now. So shout out to her. Um, for being able to make those improvements when it's it's hard to like commit to losing muscle it's hard to commit to shaping your your physique down to be better it's a really hard thing especially as a coach it's really hard too because you're telling someone to get worse technically to be better and you better be right about that decision if you're telling someone to be worse because it's a lot harder to build them back up and it's a lot harder to convince someone of, of that you know so as a coach there's a couple of things that are really hard to do one is telling someone they need to stop working out or work out less to be better. That's a hard one because you need to be right about that. And another one is pulling back when they're, when they're getting too lean, getting ready for a show. When you pull back, you better be right as a coach because it's now your fault. If someone couldn't get lean enough because their body was fighting you during a prep and you're a coach and they, couldn't, they just couldn't get lean enough, but you were grinding all the way there, not so much your fault, right? You obviously have part of that responsibility because it didn't work, but sometimes the body's just going to fight you and they just couldn't get lean enough, whatever. 
But if they get, you know, they're, they're getting too lean in your opinion at four weeks out and you pull them back, well, now it's on you 100% because that was your decision. So one of the hardest things to do is say, hey, pull back on your muscle, pull back on your conditioning and actually believe it and have faith in it. And she did that, exactly that. And look at her now. She's, she's significantly more improved and I think it's going to win a couple more shows this year. So anyway, that is what I got for the Wasatch Warrior Awesome, awesome show. Congratulations, Robin, for another Wasatch Warrior show. Congratulations to Amy for kicking ass. Please keep being the gatekeeper for the Olympia. I don't want to see 57 posing routines at the Olympia this year. Uh, so let's let's see if we can get it down to 30 with these gatekeepers here, right? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be reviewing the next one next week, so make sure to like and subscribe. TeamElitePhysique.com for worldwide online contest programming with me. <laughs> I'll talk to you later.